Hi, thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about the quarter four 2018 translation project updates, uh, what has been worked on, what is upcoming, what has been released. Uh, there are a lot of exciting things to go over here for the, past, the last three months of 2018, but I would also like to look back on the year as a whole ever so slightly because while 2018 was a challenging year in many respects, it was a very successful year in terms of fan translation projects for me personally and for the scene as a whole. Uh, in this case, I want to highlight the fact that... Um, my loose goal at the beginning of the year was to have around maybe 12 completed scripts. Maybe if I could find some small projects and do some small uh, script translation, maybe I could translate maybe 12 or so scripts this year. And if some of those became translation projects, I figure if I released them publicly, uh, maybe a handful of those would get picked up to be translation projects and uh, you know I would have something to show for the year so to speak and really by any metric that I can measure uh, my expectations were blown out of the water in terms of uh, completed fan translation projects this year I had some hand uh, of some sort in 13 released English language translation patches which I think is incredible uh, additionally if you really just you know scale that back to scripts that I translated myself in full that was seven of those released translation projects I uh, you know translated the script in its entirety some of those scripts were translated in years previous um, and you can you could add an eighth in there uh, for one script that I had at least translated it wasn't quite half of it but maybe about 30 percent of it it was a very very large script for GOD however uh, that represents a lot of work uh, sort, of, sort of translation work on my part so I was very proud to see those uh, those projects come to completion uh, additionally I set my sights on Game Gear games and I was very interested in uh, dumping scripts which is something that I haven't really attempted since uh, I just ex except when I very first got into fan translation and I decided to try to dump scripts for as many Game Gear games as I can that have still not had uh, English language translation patches uh, created for them. And to that end, uh, that effort has also been extremely successful this year. Four uh, Game Gear uh, English language translation patches have been released since I started that effort. Uh, additionally, six other scripts are translated, although I most likely have not translated all of those scripts myself. Um, uh, some of those may have been translated by the Imagine Zenki, um, but that is very, very uh, encouraging. And additionally, 15 other scripts have been dumped. So that is a very large portion of the remaining Game Gear library, and I could not be more pleased with those results. Now, having said all of that, I feel that it puts me in a unique position here. Um, to just mention to you guys just a little personal anecdote uh, that I, I feel like over the past several years I have perhaps been a little bit too focused on my professional life and my professional achievements in terms of my own feelings of well-being and satisfaction and self-worth and just my general happiness with life and I think that part of me was thinking that if I have this opportunity to maybe devote a little more time to a sort of a personal hobby that um, perhaps I would find a bit more sort of uh, self-satisfaction in uh, in you know achieving in that area and what I found actually is that despite all of the wonderful success that I've had this year with fan translation uh, I'm actually ending the year on a bit of a down note and I'm not very happy uh, I'm not very uh, you know, satisfied with myself or my life or where I am right now. And I only mention that because uh, I just want to remind people that you know your life is s something of an undivisible whole. And uh, really you need to find the support and the, the love and the happiness that you need 
uh, and that isn't necessarily going to come from your accomplishments or your achievements, you know, professionally or, or even personally. Uh, you know, ho however that's going to come to you, um, you know, it, it certainly didn't come to me <laughs> from my translation project work this year as, you know, a naively and, and probably foolishly I may have been hoping. And, uh, you know, additionally it hasn't come to me from my professional achievements either. So uh, let that be just maybe a small uh, word of caution or just uh, something to think about as we move here from 2018 to 2019. But um, I do want to talk about specifically the things that have happened in the past three months. Uh, for starters, in released projects, Moldorian uh, has been released. This is an RPG on the Sega Game Gear. And this is another one of those projects that I had, I would say, minimal um, you know, of, of direct work uh, on it that was that was sort of used in the in the final uh, English language translation patch. That was mostly handled by the team of Supper, uh, CCC Mar, and the Majin Zenki. But I did dump the script for that. Um, uh, CCC C Mar and the Majin Zenki did get back to me um, with a little bit of extra uh, work for that. Some of the script was omitted, and I had to go back in and find more of that script. Um, dumping the script for Moldorian also was a bit of a challenge, uh, you know, making the table file, and then uh, it turns out that the script is stored in a lot of small, uh, just sort of like single lines and things like that, spread out throughout the uh, the ROM data. So it really just required me going in and you know individually just identifying each of those those lines as, as I thought that they uh, that they were. Um, I'm not necessarily savvy enough to uh, figure out like what the pointer table is if there even was such a thing in, in the uh, game code. And um, yeah so I, I did put a, a, an extra effort I guess I will say. So I'm a little bit extra proud of my uh, admittedly s somewhat smaller contribution to the Moldorian project, but I definitely recommend that you guys check that out. It looks like a very, very interesting RPG, uh, fantasy RPG on the Game Gear. Uh, one of the few, there are a handful of really interesting looking uh, RPG games on the Game Gear, and uh, one, at least one of those, well, maybe, maybe a couple of those are, are outstanding. Um, still, but um, but Moldorian, I think, is it has a lot of modern amenities. I guess they would say for a game that's so old on an 8-bit system. And uh, I'm just super proud and happy that that translation project has been released. Next, uh, we have Crayon Shinchan Showdown Quantum Panic. This is a game that I dumped a script for. I translated it and I posted a help wanted ad to romhacking.net and that ad was answered by Cyclax. So this has all been within the past three months and Cyclax, um, after a small reminder, um, did a fantastic job of going in and um, doing really a lot of work. It sounds like it was, it was quite an undertaking uh, between um, getting the, uh, the script inserted but especially the not just the font, but also other graphical elements like the title screen and things like that, uh, utilized a, an odd type of compression that uh, Cyclax was forced to reverse engineer and uh, after you know quite a bit of work was able to, uh, to work with quite easily. And I think the translation project came out uh, excellently, uh, the end, the final translation patch. Uh, it is, of course, a minigame collection, so the game itself is not maybe quite as exciting as it could be, but I think Cyclax and myself actually both enjoyed uh, working on this project quite a lot, so I'm actually I'm actually rather proud uh, of the Kran Shinchan Showdown Quantum Panic um, project, and that's two Game Gear released projects here at the end of 2018. Again, I couldn't be more proud of that. Now, um, additionally, Supper and Crew uh, released Metal Max. Now, uh, I'm just mentioning that because that is a project I was interested in. I asked Supper if he would look into hacking that game and uh, dumping a script so I could translate it, but as I've said, I don't need to be the one to translate all of these scripts, and the Majin Zenki and CCC Mar were interested in that, and uh, they just, you know, took it away, and it seems like they did an amazing job. Now, that is, of course, an RPG um, inspired by Mad Max, um, that uh, was first uh, released on the 
uh, the Nintendo Famicom. Uh, this is the Famicom version of it. Now there was a remake on the Super Nintendo that, uh, or Super Famicom that has already had an English language translation patch released for it. But the original seems fun, and people say that it has good music. And I just, you know, I think it's uh, exciting and important to have the, uh, you know, the original version uh, available in English, and it is now available in English for the first time here uh, at the end of 2018. So moving on to uh, other work, and there is quite a lot of it aside from the uh, released English language translation patches, we have some finished scripts. Um, I did dig into Gunhead, uh, the new battle from the uh, Famicom. This is a script that I dumped a little while ago. I think I talked about it in another one of my quarterly videos. Uh, it's a very small script. Uh, it is all in kana. In fact, the font is all katakana, which is uh, a bit off-putting to translate from, so I actually switched it over to be all hiragana, which doesn't help all that much, but it helps a little bit. And um, I just went ahead and finished up the translation. Now, I finished a first draft translation for that, um, but it is pretty interesting. You essentially play a tactical strategy game uh, set on an island where an AI has basically was set up to mine the island on its own, and it sort of went rogue. So you have these, uh, these resources on the island. There are wrecked uh, robots and things like that that you can scavenge parts from and then you have your own robots uh, fighting against other robots that I kind of forget if they're like uh, robots that were on the island originally or if it's or if it's someone else that's on the island but um, suffice to say I translated the intro which goes over the the uh, backstory a little bit but uh, you're essentially scavenging the island for resources while you're trying to uh, sort of fight off uh, the enemies that appear on the island. It seems like a pretty interesting uh, sort of small game that I think people will enjoy uh, if and when a uh, finished patch is made from that. Uh, next up we have Kunichan no Game Tengoku. This is another mini game collection for the Game Gear and I have probably mentioned it in a previous video. Um, I finished the script translation for that. Now again, I have only finished the first draft. I still need to go back and edit it and make it publicly available, post a help wanted ad, things like that. Um, but I kind of enjoyed this script translation. Uh, there are a handful of games in this. Um, I don't remember exactly what they all are, but I know one of them is a board game. And I rather like that, uh, just the concept of that. I guess I haven't played a whole lot of video game board games, but uh, it was a little bit fun to translate. I ran across a term um, that was giving me some trouble, and I came to realize that it's actually a spoof on American Express. Uh, they were calling it something like Amex, but it was more like, um, I don't know, like Annex or something. <laughs> that was one little uh, bit of translation. Um, trivia for that game, and I'm um, looking forward to, you know, hopefully uh, somebody will take on the uh, hacking role for that game in 2019, and we'll have a uh, completed English language translation patch for Kudichan no Game Tengoku. Uh, next up we have uh, Hyokori Hyotan Jima. Now this is um, an old puppet show, and what I mean by that is like a televised show uh, like a children's show from the 60s, I believe, that aired in Japan. So I think something along the lines of the Muppets, but I, it's probably a little bit more like Thunderbirds. I think you guys may be familiar with that, or you could look it up on uh, YouTube or you know, Google or something. And um, it was very easy to translate. Uh, I dumped the script for this, and it was um, really small, just a hand, you know, maybe... I forget, 3K, 6K, something like that. It's really a small script, and the, the game text is mostly just functional, so it was really quite simple to translate. Again, I need to edit it and, uh, you know, just really uh, make sure that everything is fine with it, but, uh, but yeah, that's another script that I translated in 2018 uh, in the past three months. Next up, we have Doraemon Nor Noronosuke's Ambition. Now, Doraemon, of course, is another child's TV show, 
and it, uh, I believe, had a manga that it was based on, but don't quote me on that. Uh, it is a very famous uh, anime, however. Uh, I, of course, made a table file for that. I dumped a script for it, and I did translate it. Again, this is very small. It's mostly an action game. It's sort of an action platformer. Uh, there are just a few sequences where you can find characters in the game, and they just give one or two lines each. But there is, you know, what I would call a fully featured, like, text engine uh, in the game. And, uh, but yeah, and there was a, a few lines of script that I went ahead and translated. Another very small script, Zangir on the Game Gear. This is a, again, a strategy game. Uh, this seems to be sort of one of those, uh, like, warring states, uh, sort of Civil War, Sengoku period um, strategy game uh, on the Game Gear. This, I believe, was, you know, I guess popular on computer systems and that sort of thing. So this is a port to the Game Gear. Um, again, it's a very small script. I went ahead and made a, a table file. I dumped it and translated the script. And when I talk about making table files, you guys may be familiar with this at this point, but really a table file is just, um, it's the text encoding for the text that's used in the game. Um, so uh, so that's what I mean, is just sort of having figured out the text encoding and, and laid that out into a, into a file. Um, finally, I guess for finished scripts here, right at the end of the year, I managed to finish up the script for City Hunter. Now, I just made a whole video on that, if you guys are interested in how I dumped the script for that, which included a lot of kanji, and required me to do the first uh, insertion that I've ever done into uh, game data um, I needed to do for uh, being able to make a table file and figure out the text encoding for City Hunter. Uh, please check out that previous video. But uh, suffice to say, um, that's not a very large script either. Uh, probably, I don't know, maybe 20, 30k, something like that. Uh, and it includes kanji, so that does make the job of translating it quite a bit easier. But it's interesting, translating a script like that here at the end of 2018 has been... I'm, I'm taking my translation a bit more seriously. Uh, I am looking very seriously at translating professionally, possibly in a freelance capacity, and I've been studying Japanese a lot uh, more, and I'm realizing the, uh, the gap between where I am now and where I would like to be in terms of being able to pass the Japanese language proficiency test N1, which is sort of the end goal of your Japanese language uh, proficiency for, uh, you know, learners of Japanese as a second language, uh, it basically is going to bring you up to uh, like a Japanese sort of 12th grade listening and reading level. Um, so you're going to pretty much have the Japanese education and reading level and comprehension ability of, uh, of like a Japanese uh, high school student graduating, uh, graduating high school. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm realizing that that is a bit of a lofty goal, and it's one that I'm, I'm I think, realistically shooting for. But when translating City Hunter, um, I don't know. You know, I've translated a lot of scripts, but this one... Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a, a slightly more nuanced perspective on translating, and I feel like it's, uh, it's one of the scripts that, I don't know, maybe it's just helped me uh, level up the slightest bit in my translation. It is a clone, more or less, of Rolling Thunder, uh, skinned with City Hunter. I think City Hunter fans will get a kick out of it uh, in terms of the personality of the characters and the characters that show up in the game that you are familiar with from the City Hunter manga and anime. I am a City Hunter fan, and I think fans will really enjoy um, this English language patch, uh, if and when that becomes available. Now, I definitely did some more work uh, dumping scripts and making table files uh, this past three months. In fact, quite a bit of work. I looked into Magic Knight Rare Earth 2 a bit more. Uh, making of Magic Knight. So this is on the Game Gear again, the first Magic Knight Rare Earth RPG uh, we did release a translation patch for, but this is not an RPG so much as a raising simulation. Um, and I uh, was able to figure out the text encoding. Uh, I found the first bit of text in the ROM, but I realized that it uses a byte to swap between what values mean in the text encoding. So like if you have, let's say, values, you know, we'll call it 10 through 20, and 
so 10 through 20 are basically represent certain characters of your you know of your font but of your language um, and then you'll hit this one byte and it'll swap that so 10 through 20 uh, represents something else it represents different characters in your font and that is fine but I need to code something to take that into account when dumping a script and I've yet to do that I actually think it'll be quite easy because uh, conceptually it's not uh, very difficult I just have not sat down to perform that work on my script dumping script that I have in PHP that I think will be able to handle that um, it's lower on my list of priorities while I work on other things that don't require me to uh, to code uh, something new right now um, but I did make progress on that uh, I also looked into Mito Komon this is also based I believe on an old television show uh, in fact I think it's a very long-running television show in Japan um, uh, don't ask me to explain exactly what it is about but it's kind of a historical drama I think it's about a kind of a a colorful like historical character who I almost want to say was a bit of a uh, Robin Hood type character but don't quote me on that if you're interested in Mito Komon go ahead and do some searching and do some research on that for yourself uh, suffice to say there is a Famicom game and I did figure out the text encoding for that and I made all the preparations to dump a script I did not actually dump the script but I think it's all ready uh, if and when I choose to do that um, I also took another look at Nazo Puyo, uh, are they no Ru, I believe it is, um, which is a sauce that you make with butter. Um, but essentially this is her, her curry, her curry Ru. And I realized that the, the font, uh, is not in an alphabetical order in the ROM. That was throwing me off for quite a bit. I was trying to relative search, uh, on alphabetical order. And you can't do that if your font is not stored in alphabetical order. So um, I was able to find the font in a tile editor, however, uh, and I was able to basically figure out the text encoding based on that order. But this also uses a switch byte, just like Magic Knight Ray Earth 2, so that is going to require more work. Uh, I also took a look for no particular reason at an adventure game uh, Akagawa Jiro no Yude Resha now this is a Akagawa Jiro is a author and uh, apparently quite a famous author in Japan uh, their debut short story I guess that sort of put them on the map was this uh, this Yude Resha or Ghost Train and they made a Famicom game out of it so I think that's rather interesting uh, I believe it's you know sort of a mystery detective uh, type of story uh, probably came along after things like the you know Portopia serial murder uh, game on Famicom got popular uh, there was a bit of a adventure game rush and a lot of those are uh, sort of detective and uh, murder mystery games uh, and this is one of them and I um, basically made a, a whole table file uh, I've identified where all the script is uh, I was working to figure out all the control codes and I sort of left off part way because there's just a bunch of control codes but I it's not necessarily necessary to do that uh, everything should be ready to dump on that so if anyone wants to translate that or when I do uh, it is available now um, I also dumped more scripts for Game Gear games I dumped a script for Ninku 2 um, yeah, it's got a subtitle, I don't really care. Uh, it's like a, some sort of ninja anime manga thing, and it had a uh, game on the Game Gear. So uh, I figured out the text encoding for that, found the script and dumped it. Uh, I also dumped a script for Pocket John So, which is a Mahjong game. Um, so another Mahjong game. This one, I actually kind of forget. I dumped a couple Mahjong games, so... I'll put up some screenshots or something of them. Uh, one of them in particular seemed like it had an interesting story mode, and I feel like it may have been Pocket John So. That seemed pretty interesting, actually. Uh, you know, for a Mahjong game. Uh, I also dumped a script and figured out the text encoding for Ken, Ken Yu Densetsu Yaiba. Uh, I believe this has been passed on to CCC Mar and... Um, the Majin Senki 
Now, uh, this is also based on sort of a manga anime. Uh, it required me making two table files. There are uh, so there's script uh, stored in two different formats. There's sort of two different fonts in the game. There's like a smaller font and a larger font, I believe, is how, how it goes. Um, but I, sh I believe I found everything, all the inline uh, dialogue. There's some fixed length text, it's the kind of text um, style that they'll use in menus and things like that. Um, so that should be all set, and, f and I've passed that on for translation, so hopefully we'll see that coming up here before too long. And I also dumped a script for Tyson Mahjong How Pai 2. Again, another uh, Mahjong game. Now, Tyson is like like war, so I think that it's uh, Kind of like a versus mahjong and i think it's a little more straightforward than, than pocket johnso in fact i also think that there were uh i think there's a lot more text in the game that's kind of graphical text uh but anyway uh, i dumped a script i had to make two files uh two two different table files for that for two different kinds of text encoding but uh, that should also be all set to translate uh, additionally i did some other work uh, some editing on the script for Maze on Ikoku on the Famicom. This is a script that I translated quite a while ago. I was I was fairly relaxed in the way that I went about translating it, and I would like to be, of course, as accurate as possible, so I really want to go over and uh, edit the script and double-check all of the translation and just sort of do as good a job as I can on that as possible. Now, I got a head start on that, but I forgot that the script is quite large. I think I... You know, I managed to get about, I don't know, 10 or 20% done editing that script, and then I realized, wow, I have so much more of the script to uh, to edit, and I just have not been back to that, but hopefully I will take a look at that in 2019 and really get that uh, nailed down and made publicly available so that someone can help me to uh, make an translation patch out of it. I translated around half of Mezase Pachi Pro Pachiokun, which is a, uh, a pachinko game on the Famicom. This is something that I dumped a while ago, so I've talked about that in my videos this year. But it's... Uh, there's not a lot of English language information on pachinko, so it's been pretty interesting looking up pachinko specific terms. Uh, additionally, the script is all kana, which makes it a little bit challenging, and I'm finding some of the text to be a bit perplexing as I play through it. Uh, I'm hoping that getting a little bit of context on some of it will help, and I have been looking at videos of the game uh, and playing through it just a little bit myself. But uh, I do fear that some of that translation will be a little rough uh, when I do finally finish that, but uh, I'm just picking away at it as best I can, and I did do some work on that in the past several months. Uh, additionally, I did some work on World Derby. I spoke about that in my last video. Uh, I did print the font tiles uh, that all oh, that all of the kanji that was in that. There's a whole bunch. I did print those to the screen, and I actually made a table file for the text encoding for the, it's a 12 by 16 font. And I did require a little bit of help from uh, Maxim on SMS Power, uh, mostly with f uh, bypassing a checksum that happens uh, within the game that was preventing me from being able to edit uh, the game and then and then run it successfully. So a big thank you to Maxim for helping me out with that. And as far as I know, all that whole text encoding for the 12 by 16 text is good, and so that all should be dumpable. Interestingly enough, the sticking point right now is actually the original 8 by 8 text, which I was able to make a table file for originally, come to find out is actually more values than 256, which would take it outside of the realm of a single byte or 8-bit encoding to a double byte or 16-bit encoding. And from what I've found in the game, it seems uh, most of the 8x8 and possibly all of the 8x8 text is actually stored um, as, as an 8-bit sort of single byte encoding, so I'm not really sure 
what that means for the characters that go beyond that 256 limit. Uh, there may be a third text encoding that is uh, some kind of double byte, or again, there could be some sort of switch byte that allows you to reuse some of the some of the single bytes of the 8-bit encoding. I'm just really not sure about that. So that's kind of thrown a big wrench in that for me, at least in my ability to simply dump a script and translate it for World Derby. So that's a bit disappointing. Um, I did also figure out the intro text encoding for Slam Dunk on the Game Gear but uh, of course there is there does seem to be more text encodings uh, in that game for whatever reason and I may have also hit my limit for how much I can I can figure out for that particular game uh, now in terms of the uh, upcoming projects well I know that uh, the uh, Supper and the Majin Zenki and uh, CCC Mar uh, are working on Godzilla for the Game Gear, so hopefully we'll see something coming up about that in the near future. Um, a lot of these Game Gear games, you know, like I said, there are a lot of uh, of, of dumped scripts and finished scripts. Um, the Majin Zenki has a handful of them also, so hopefully we'll be seeing some more things there. And in terms of my goals for 2019, I guess I would like to see uh this work continue but i think i'm pretty much at the limit of how many more scripts i can dump for the game gear i would like to go ahead and code up the uh handling of a switch bite for magic knight rare earth 2 and oh and and not nazo puyo so that um so those scripts can be dumped. I think that that will be good. But I would also like to go ahead and maybe help Supper out with some of his projects. Uh, in particular, um, I have been lax on working on Bahamut Senki, and I would definitely like to resolve that and get that script translated here, uh, hopefully in early 2019. And uh, you know, I took a look at Supper's page, and I believe he has another project. I. I'm not going to guarantee that I can help him out with it, but I'll, I'm interested in taking a look at the script at any rate uh, and seeing what that is like. Uh, additionally, I want to study a lot of Japanese and really level up my skills. I'm probably going to start reading more books and websites and articles and things of that nature, and hopefully uh, all of that will help me to uh, to just fan translate even better and more professionally but uh, I have a feeling that there will not be as many uh, released translation projects that I've worked on in 2019 uh, I have a feeling that I will probably not have translated as many scripts uh, in 2019 as I have in 2018 but um, this is certainly something that I enjoy and despite the fact that I don't feel like it has uh, enriched my life to the extent that I may have hoped that it could have uh, it certainly makes me proud uh, I'm very uh, proud of the work that I've done this year uh, I'm very thankful to all of the people who have helped uh, all of these projects uh, come to completion or even just get started. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to a bright uh, future of more uh, game translations in, uh, in 2019. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that this was interesting, and I hope you'll join me again. Take care.